Joni Rivers made her first appearance on this tonight's show. Could you guess the year? Let me see if I can. Um, Let me show you how time, you talk about how time I would gets say condensed. 65. Right. Well, you're very close. February the 17th, 1966. Yeah. She was single at that time. We watched her go from a single to a... She's had a baby boy. To a lady, to a baby girl. Right. Um, and now she has a new book relating part of that called Having a Baby Can Be a Scream. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be opening at the MGM Grand Hotel June the 5th. She's going to be up there at the same time. I, I hope not. I'm yeah. up there that week. Uh, with Shirley Jones and Jack Cassidy and is currently at the, the Little Club here in Beverly Hills. Miss Joan Rivers. <laughs> Laying the big stuff on tonight, huh? <laughs> wow. What did you say to me backstage? <laughs> well, you, well, I just happened to turn around. I saw you walk in. I said, the rabbit died. And... <laughs> it's a gay polar bear, John. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I don't know. I saw Diana Ross in Vegas come out in a coat like this, and she got applause. <laughs> so I said, that's it. So I bought this for $130, and I oh, wore it on stage, on and they laughed. I swear to you. Did they really? Well, close up. You know what I'm saying. The little paws and people running around inside. It's not the, the best. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes me feel good. Thank okay. you. Okay, how you been? Very, the book is in the second printing. Is that a joke? The first one was blurred. Remember those jokes? Yeah. Well, <laughs> everything is in here. It comes out, as I said the other night on the show, every... Thing has been programmed and is lying dormant back in there. And every little joke, sooner or later, having a baby can be a scream. Yes, yeah, and it's a second. I'm hysterical because there's a, you know, it's only for pregnant women or women that are going to have baby just had one, and the population growth is zero now. So I figured that's my usual luck, you know. <laughs> and I have to give it when you know contraception is around. I couldn't have written this ten years ago, but on what mothers could have bought it. Yeah. But it really is working well. I'm thrilled. Well, you've you just know? had the one one child, right? So far, John. Well, I a lot haven't of had a hot flash yet. You know, you know. <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> what? Uh... Now, a lot of people would say, what makes you an expert? One child, big deal. Yeah, I'm not an expert. expert. Oh. I had a doctor write, approve all that. I see. But I just wrote because they, when you have a baby, it's the worst thing you can go through if nobody tips you off. Like, when the kid is born, it's ugly, and no one tells you that. When Melissa was born, I mean, like, and the nurse, evil, said, it looks just like you. Well, you don't need that. <laughs> You're traumatized enough you know, as it is. I did it with a kid. And um, so I put in things that, like, no one told me delivery room nurses and Obstetrical nurses are very, very mean ladies. You mentioned that once. I wonder why. You'd think they would have some kind of humanistic... Uh... Oh, ask any woman in your audience, John, for a good story. I'm yeah. so... Evil. Yeah. They're never around. They're always down the hall with the interns. Hi, woo-woo. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee tonight, yes. Yeah. Well, maybe they get jaded. Maybe that's it. Oh. The woman in the next room to me died while the nurse was kissing an intern. You know, <laughs> died. And she was a visitor. I mean, <laughs> Just, you know, I mean, no I was, warmth, I was in, the, in the delivery room. Yeah. I mean, things happened to me that, that I survived is a miracle of science. I'm lying there in labor, and the nurse said, still think blondes have more fun. I mean, just... That's you know. mean. But, you know, Florence Nightingale was a tramp. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Florence Nightingale was... Wait. I am a Barnard graduate, and I have done surveys and studies on it. Florence Nightingale was a tramp. The lady with the lamp? Oh, know? and how? The, you know what color that lamp is? <laughs> hey, soldier, I didn't know that. Okay, what did she do? She followed the army from camp to camp to camp. For this, they gave her a medal. My cousin Shirley also <laughs> followed the army from camp to camp. You know what they gave her? No. Six shots of penicillin. Six shots of penicillin. <laughs> and just in time, I might add. I saw your cousin. Uh, you didn't know that. Uh, um, yeah. I didn't know it's that was traumatic. I've heard about it all the time, oh, but men will never know. I it's like a doctor always says, you know, even I guess a pediatric gynecologist can say, we understand what it's like. But that's kind of ridiculous well, too, isn't it? First of all, gynecologists will never know, and we shouldn't talk about this on the air, because that's well, the worst for women. Really? You know, and they talk about proctology, but that's different because you're flipped over and you can fantasize that it's the Nazis and you're being tortured. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Or a, good, or a good friend, or, you know, who knows? You have your fantasies, I have mine. You know, so, that's why out here I won't go near the gynecologist with the earthquakes. What do you mean out here? Is that different than... 
Well, I, you know there's gonna be a quake while I'm in hysterics. I mean, I just have... I'll be buried like that in lava. I mean, I, I mean, just... <laughs> a little tableau is set away into a crib. So you really, uh, well, you know... I, I love California. I fail to see why you have such hostility toward... Your father's a doctor, yes. still practicing? God bless him. But yeah. He's, he's a real doctor. Well, that's right. He's at the old school. Yeah, not like Marcus Welby. You watch Marcus Welby? I love Marcus Welby. He's never at the hospital, is he? He's always... He's getting his suits tailored. He's yeah. never at the hospital. No, Marcus Welby is a GP. My father, God bless him, still in practice, 38 years. We never had those cases. Have you ever seen a normal case walk into Marcus Welby? Pellegra, Pellegra, scurvy. I mean, I've never seen... My f leprosy. We never had these things. No. You know, my father had what every GP has. We had flu and abortions. That's what you had. <laughs> Right? <laughs> a lot of parents going, what can I do? You know? <laughs> then abortions got legalized and don't ask. Then poor um, father was out of it. Well, He's... first of all, we, the son came into the house the first time in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's not true. No, How does your father react when you do these kind of things? He's thrilled because uh, yeah. <laughs> he just laughs and the patients go, huh? What? No, but, uh, was... i, I got to interrupt oh, before right. we get on something else. Uh, we'll do this, and we'll come back and talk about life with the, with the Rivers family. After this, we'll be right back. We were just talking about uh, you're, getting, you're, you're settled out here now and, oh, and going it. through and getting your house fixed. And we, were, we have some people who jointly have worked for both of us. We're not going to mention anything. It's not a plug. But I mentioned some of the crazy things you go through. Uh, when workmen are in the house, and I was just telling you the story, and it's a true story. It sounds like a, something you, a routine you'd make up. I, I had the phone company come once. And... It was a, the house we bought was an existing house, and they had a, a phone in a little niche in the bathroom. And it's, it's the phone always rings when you're in the shower or you're, you're in there. <laughs> and it's very handy to be able to reach over and take the call. So the phone man shows up, and he's very serious. And they're always very aware of the people they've worked for out here in Hollywood, and they drop names. I was just up to Paul Newman's the other day, and I did this. And you say, oh, that's very nice, or whatever. And he says, would you mind sitting on the John? And I said, uh, okay. <laughs> and I says, would you mind telling? He says, I want to measure the cord. So over to the phone here in the little niche, exactly how much, uh, how much you'll need. And I, thought, I find this hysterical. And my wife, Joanna, is in the other room. And, and he says, you know, I, I measured Frank Sinatra last week. <laughs> now, I'm in the, in the john, and Joanna says, what are you doing in there? And I says, you won't believe this, <laughs> but the telephone man is measuring, and it... it but for real. But, oh, for and, real. but they keep saying to me, that's how we started, they keep saying to me, Mr. Carson has nicer wallpaper. But well, that makes you feel really terrific. Oh, that's great. I'm glad yeah, to but, hear that. Um, oh, but I've had some whack outs out here. We have a painter. Oh, you know, I come and he's mixing the paint with my lamp. I mean, that tells you right away. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know, again, in New York, I knew who to go to. Out here, it's so new. And I figured I'd make friends. I mean, because I think you get more with being nice than just screaming like I do with Edgar, you know. And I'm, um, no, but you know. So he was wearing like a dark green suit and a light green tie and a mint green hanky. And I said, oh, isn't that a pretty tone combination? He said to me, I thought it matched. Well, I that's mean, your you know, it's over. You know, that's what your, your house is going to look like. My yeah. house, don't start. Let's talk about the, 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 your, your book again here and some of the other traumatic experiences you've had. Weren't you voted once the, the, mother, of the, the mother of the year? I told us that George, Santa Monica only, though. Oh. Yeah, I, 23rd Street, it's over for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, the crown disappears and the whole thing. But that's because they took 12 celebrities and put us in a oh, room with our children, and whoever picked their kid was it. And, um... <laughs> it's a different world out here. And I got <laughs> Melissa on the second try. I said, I think that one. <laughs> She's not as good-looking as the Gentile, but I'll take her. She's <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm a good mother. Yeah, I, I really? try. I'm a, I'm a good... I'm a lousy housekeeper. That's you said you, the, that was one of your... Uh, you know. Not, not your strongest point. If God wanted me to cook the hands, it'd be aluminum. And I, I just, you know... <laughs> they were meant to hold charge cards. It's, it's, you know... <laughs> I figure it's between waxing the floor and waxing your thighs. Go for the old thighs. And, um... Do, do, doesn't Joanna wax her thighs? I oh, know. John! Is that good? What I, does I she do know. on Thursdays? <laughs> you wouldn't believe. No, I don't. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know much about those. I guess she does. Yeah, they put hot know. wax all over your thighs. Little lady named Eva Braun. She set up a little place out <laughs> 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 
Puts that on, and that's that's good, huh? With little leather uniform. Don't women shave their legs anymore? Is that... Yeah, but only up to here. From here on, they... <clears throat> and you find yourself telling secrets, you know. <laughs> that or... Um, no, but, but it hurt. <laughs> that or when you, when you rip a stocking and you put the nail polish on. Yeah, I remember that. Oh, I remember that. And you forget about it, and you go to take it off at night. <laughs> if you're hairy, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to stay feminine. Yeah, but you're all settled out here now. You're going to yeah. open at the... Uh... The little... I'm, I'm, I live here. I like it. The only thing I don't like are the earthquakes. Does that really scare you? Oh, come on. Were well, you... there's a possibility that the uh, geologists keep saying eventually, which always kills me. They'll say it could happen tonight or it could <laughs> happen a hundred years from now. I wish they could just narrow that a little bit yeah. and say Tuesday, three o'clock or something so you could make plans to go to Barstow or something. But they the, say that's really what they say. The it's going to happen. And there's going to be a major quake somewhere along the San Andreas. When you were in it. I was in the one they had out here a few years ago. My bedroom hasn't seen such action since my wedding. <laughs> I mean, it just... <laughs> then in the earthquake, you said to Edgar, that's more like it. Uh... A friend of mine was in a motel with a sailor, and she thought he had put on the magic fingers. <laughs> no, <laughs> that I don't believe at all. Well, it's true. True. Oh. But, um... You know what worries me? Like, again, with the women, we talk about the, the thigh waxing and everything. Um, the reason I didn't put any silicone in is because silicone travels. Oh, you mean it in the booby? You know about this. They know. America knows now. Oh. They, it's a little bag with, you know. And that gets out of. And a friend of mine put in $3,000 worth of the old boobos. And, um, <laughs> or bread, I don't know what you call it, busts. Yes. And the earthquake came, and she woke up with a bust and a hip. <laughs> <laughs> I have a wonderful picture of it, I'll tell you later. Uh, we'll be back with Vincent Price, Bird Convey, Hal Lipset, and Chaz Chase. Here's a word about Alpha, friends.